Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. Today we're going to take a look at antivirus software and firewall software for your Linux machine. Lots of folks ask me, do I need to have any kind of antivirus on my Linux box? And the answer I give them is usually no, you don't need antivirus if you are running a standalone Linux system that you are practicing common sense safeguards against getting bad stuff on your computer. It pretty much is immune to most of the viruses out there. However, there are some situations where you might feel safer if you had some sort of way to figure out whether you had any malicious code on your system. If you use Flash or Java in a browser, then you are at risk because no matter what operating system you are on, there are vulnerabilities in Flash and Java that you could uh, pray, you know, somebody could use against you uh, with a, like a drive by attack. Uh, you could pick something up off of a website. It can happen. Now, how dangerous these are on a Linux system, that's kind of up for debate because most viruses out there are written for Windows. And they do that because, well, it's low-hanging fruit. Most people run Windows. Windows is a security joke to begin with. It is, you know, it's got so many holes in it, it's like a sieve. So if you were going to write malicious software and try and get it on a bunch of computers, you'd probably go after Windows first. They don't really mess around with Linux too much because Linux is just a more secure system. So even if you did get a virus on your system, how much damage it would do or how dangerous it would be uh, would probably be pretty much negligible. But still, you might want to know that it is there. Also, people ask all the time about a firewall for Linux. Now, this is a different story. While I'm kind of like, uh, you don't really need the antivirus. You can get along without it if you're not in, you know, in a dangerous environment. Firewall, on the other hand, is something that is very good to have on your system and it will protect you from a lot of threats. So we're gonna look at GUFW Firewall, which is a really, really neat firewall that it's super lightweight, and no matter what Linux distribution you have, it works directly with something called IP tables, which is included in the Linux kernel. It's already there. IP tables is set by default when you first install to just let anything into the computer or anything go out of the computer. And what GUFW does is give you a very nice interface so you can configure IP tables to keep threats out of your system. So we're gonna look at both of these pieces of software today. And the antivirus that we're looking at is ClamAV. It's been around for a long, long time. ClamAV is very useful for a lot of different things that you can do with it. So we're gonna look at ClamAV first and then we will look at GUFW. So we have a nice Linux Mint install here and I'm going to set up antivirus on it. ClamAV is pretty much in the repositories for every major distribution of Linux so you should be able to install it if you're running Ubuntu or Linux Mint or any Ubuntu derivative it's already there and uh, it's very easy to get going so sudo apt install ClamAV. And it's going to go out and get it. And it's installed. That's it. That's as long as that took. Pretty amazing. Now, once we get ClamAV installed, the first thing that we're going to want to make sure is that we have the very latest definitions files so that it has something to uh, look for when it comes to searching for virus. This, these are the files, the reference files that it uses to scan your file system and see if there's any threats in there. If it comes up with anything interesting, then it will uh, show you some output on the screen. And to do that, we want to do sudo fresh clam. And it says it's already up to date because I had installed this earlier before we started the video. The first time that you do that, it might take it a little bit of time to actually get all of the definitions. Uh, after that, it sets up a service, and that service will go out once daily and get the latest. So if you end up using this a lot, 
you probably uh, will be very happy that it goes ahead and it updates itself on a daily basis. If you are only using it once in a great while, let's say that you're going to scan your system once a year or so, then what you might want to do is install it, use it, and then uninstall it so you don't have that service running in the background. That's entirely up to you. Unlike other antivirus programs that you might be used to, ClamAV does not run in the background and watch all of the services and processes and network traffic on your computer. It doesn't do that. What it does is it scans file systems and it looks for threats. That's all ClamAV does. And this is very useful. If you are somebody who has a lot of Windows computers, you can use ClamAV to scan them offline to find viruses. If you're, let's say, doing this sort of thing for other people, like uh, you're cleaning out computers for clients who have Windows machines, then ClamAV is very useful because you can actually scan the system offline, find any threats in there, and then figure out what to do with them. So to make it work for your Linux system, it's just a matter of typing in some commands at the command line. There is a graphic interface to ClamAV and it's called ClamTK. I will not be showing you how to use that in this video because I don't use it. It's just as easy to type a command in at the terminal and make it work. If you would like to investigate using ClamTK, it's in the repos as well and you can just install that and then you'll have a graphic user interface but I don't use this very often and so therefore I'm trying to keep it as simple and as in the background as possible alright so let us first of all show you where you get the information you need to make it useful because there are a lot of different uh, variables that you can use when you actually do a scan so what you want to do first is do clam scan and make sure I spell that right. Yep. And then we want help. And this is going to give us a big long list of different arguments that you can use with the clam scan command to get it to do all kinds of different things. Now there is a lot of documentation about clam AV online. Like I said, it's been around for a long, long time. It is well known and it is well trusted. It's not fancy, but it gets the job done, that's for sure. And so you can look at the different arguments there. And if that's gobbledygook to you, then just look at the documentation because they pretty much tell you what you need to do. So what do we need to do? We want to scan some part of the file system to see whether we have any viruses in there. And so the command would be sudo clam scan. Make sure I get that right. Okay. And then the arguments that I'm going to use, the first one is recursive. So I want it to look at everything in the directory that I tell it to look at. And the next thing that I want it to do is only tell me if it finds an infected file because what it will do by default is list every file that it looks at and it will say, okay, okay, okay. When this thing's done, I just want a summary just show me what you found and then you know give me a summary about the thing and and I'll, I'll go from there now it's very important to understand something about clam AV and that is it will report any Windows executable code that it sees as a threat because it's designed for a Linux system so if you have a wine installation and you're running like Windows games in it, it will see every one of those executables and it'll come back as a threat. It'll tell you that you've got Windows executable code on your machine. It is very important that you do not configure ClamAV to automatically quarantine or remove files because it does come back with false positives. For instance, I ran this last night on my computers and on a couple of my machines it found the Wi-Fi driver which was one of those uh, wrappers where it's a, like actually a Windows driver that is uh, wrapped in code that allows it to run on Linux and it reported that back and said that that was a Trojan horse 
Well, it wasn't a Trojan horse. It was my Wi-Fi driver, and I needed to have it there. And it was also included in the Linux Mint system. So I went and looked that up, and a lot of people were posting on the Linux Mint forum and go, what is this, and is this a virus? What's on my machine? And people are going back, no, that's a false positive from ClamAV. It's your Wi-Fi driver. Don't get rid of that. So do keep that in mind. It also found a couple of interesting things uh, that I was kind of surprised it came across, like... It found, uh, in my email folder, it found a a spurious email, one that was a spoofed email that uh, was just sitting in the inbox. Of course, I just deleted that, and that took care of the problem. It also found in an archive file that I have from a web page that I used to have, I had uh, archived the entire web page in a big zip file, and I just had it sitting on the hard drive. Well, it goes back, and it finds that there was some php code in there that was suspicious so it really digs deep into the system which is a good thing but a bad thing is is sometimes it can kick back false positives so if you see something and you're going what is that you might want to go do some research on it before you delete it or something like that you might end up messing up your system it doesn't work for no reason you know it really wasn't a problem to begin with Okay, so this is the clam scan command. Like I said, we're using recursive and we're just going to have it report infections and then you tell it what to scan. If you want it to scan the entire computer, the complete installation, just give it the root directory, now turn it loose. If you have a lot of data on your machine, this is gonna take a long time. We're talking maybe four or five hours. So in that case, you may want to set this up to run all night and then you can check it in the morning. And what I would do in that situation is to redirect its output to a file. So I would create a file in my home folder that I could go back and look at later. And you just do that by uh, using the bracket there and then give it a file name like, uh, let's call this one uh, clam av dot log okay so that way you can just go back and look at it not ghg thank you you can go back and look at it and see what's going on but we're not going to scan the entire computer i'm just going to scan one directory just to show you what it does Uh, and let's do let's go ahead and do the email directory here i don't know how long this is going to take there's not a whole lot of email on this machine but you might find something interesting to look at so we're going to have it look in the Thunderbird directory. This is where all of the emails are kept on the system, so it's a good place to look. And we'll turn it loose. And you don't get any output on the screen until it finds something interesting. So you notice now that it just has I. So while that is scanning, we're going to turn that loose and let it go. And we're going to let that take care of itself. And we're going to move on to talking about GUFW, which is firewall software. And we're going to let that work in the background while we're talking about GUFW. So I need to open up another terminal so we can go ahead and install GUFW and we will show you how to configure it. GUFW is a very, very cool piece of software. Like I said, it's very simple and it allows you just to get to a utility that's already in the Linux kernel. So there's not a lot of overhead on your system. You're just installing this little piece of software. So to get that sudo apt install GUFW. And by the way, a lot of distributions these days just ship this. So it might be in your system settings and they call it firewall. Linux Mint 18 has it by default, I believe. We're running 17.3, so I'm going to have to install it. So let's say yes. And it will go out and get it and put it on the system. And it is taking its time and doing its thing. It's actually a very small program. It shouldn't take long. But we are scanning in the background, so that uh, might slow the system down just a little bit. Uh, I have noticed that ClamAV does it does take up some system resources while it's running. So that's why I say if you're going to scan an entire system, do it overnight. All right. So now that's installed, so we'll go ahead and clear the screen because, well, we can close the terminal because GUFW is a graphic type installation. Close this up. There we go. 
took a little while. Yeah, this thing is scanning its little it's scanning its little heart out. I can hear the hard drive going crunch, crunch, crunch while we're doing the video here. Okay, that's why this is kind of running a little slow. In Linux Mint, it comes up in the menu as Firewall Configuration. So look for Firewall and you should be able to find it. Okay, so we will open. Oh, Clam is done. It didn't find nothing. So that's how you do it right there, gang. Like I said, and that's probably the last we're going to talk about Clam AV. Do read up on it. Figure out how to configure Clam AV. Make it work for you. I'm just using it to scan in the background. And um, I did run, like I said, I ran scans on my network last night, all the machines. Probably the last time that I had run Clam AV on these machines was a couple of years ago. It didn't find anything. I mean, like I said, one bad email and a website that I had backed up that was in an archive file. That bad code, that PHP code, wasn't hurting nobody, but I was kind of glad to know it was there because then I just deleted the file. I was like, I uh, don't want to actually, you know, reuse that again somewhere. Oops. So, very cool. All right. So, let's go ahead and close this terminal because we don't need it open. And we will take a look at GUFW. Okay. So, GUFW when you first load it up comes with it turned off and then it has some basic profiles to choose from we have public and that would be if you were on a laptop and you were taking your computer into coffee shops or work or something like that and you wanted to make sure that you were super secure the next one is office and the next one is home we're going to choose home and we're going to turn it on there we go and now it's going to get itself together there. Oh, double click that and turned it off. There we go. Okay, so basically what this is saying is, is that anything that's incoming, we're going to deny it. We're just going to drop it. It's not going to get any sort of play at all. If it tries to knock on a port on the computer, we're saying, uh-uh, I don't know who you are. Forget it. You're not getting in here. There are choices here where you can choose allow if you chose allow here you'd basically turn the firewall off deny means that it just is going to take uh, any request that comes into the system and it's just going to throw it away it's not going to do anything with it if you choose to reject what that's going to do is it's actually going to send a message back to whatever host it was that was trying to get in your system and say i'm sorry i'm not letting you in don't choose that one because what you're telling the attacker at that point is, is, hey, I'm here, but I'm not letting you in. And he may take it as a personal challenge and be like, well, I'm going to get in. I'll figure a way around it. But if it just rejects it, he doesn't know that it worked or not worked. And then finally, for outgoing, we're going to pretty much allow everything. For certain software that you might run on your computer, let's say that you want to run Samba, which is file sharing, or you want to run like... Uh, you want to run, uh, what is it called, SSH, <laughs> which I actually do run on my entire network, then you're going to have to create an exception so that that server can listen for calls if you want to, let's say, remotely log into the machine. So to do that, go to Rules. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bigger because it might make it easier to see what's going on here. And we want to add a rule. So down here, this is the easiest way to do it. Just do a search. So if we wanted to add a rule for Samba, what's the matter with me today? I'm typing things out of order. So if we want to add for Samba, it finds it there. You see it's uh, found the Samba application. And then we just add the rule like this. And it goes off and it configures it. And it's taking its time to do that in the background. Oh, I see. No, that doesn't close after you do that. I actually added the rule three times clicking it. That's something to look out for, isn't it? Okay, so then if you wanted to get rid of these rules for some reason, okay, I made the exception. Just tell it that you want to get rid of it. It's actually working in the background. I think it's mad at me. Okay, yeah, no rule selected. Did its job. 
Okay, so that's how you use it. It's really that simple. If you want, if you need to come back later and set up another rule, just click plus. Let's say for in this case we want to we can choose from the list, or we can just do a filter here. So I'm going to do SSH. And it's telling me that having SSH with a general exception is a security risk. I know that, but my SSH is very secure in and of itself, so I'm not worried about it. So I would go ahead and add that. And this would be if you had an SSH server running on the system, not the SSH client. You don't have to worry about it with a server. So that's how that works. And there's the SSH exceptions. They are put into the system. And you can do that for anything that you want to have listening on the internet, like Skype. There are exceptions in there for that. So there you go. Um, I know with some distributions of Linux that they come with GUFW installed. And then people wonder when they set it up why their Samba doesn't work and their SSH doesn't work. <laughs> you can look on the forums for like OpenSUSE usually comes with the firewall enabled and people will go, well, this doesn't work. And everybody just like drones the same answer. Enable it in the firewall. Enable it in the firewall. <laughs> enable it in the firewall. So that's one of the reasons that uh, like Ubuntu, um, Linux Mint, and other distributions that do have this in the system, they have it turned off because people that don't even know it's there, uh, they just install their system and it doesn't work. And so you have to go set it up for yourself if you want to have it running. All right, so let us talk a little bit here about, before we close up the video, about probabilities, percentages, and how much you actually need this stuff and in what situation you're going to need it. I just want to put this out there. The antivirus software in ClamAV is not the only antivirus for Linux. There are plenty of different antivirus scanners for Linux. You would need that if you felt like that, for some reason or other, you had picked up an infection. Like I said, this is not going to run in the background. It's not something that is going to be scanning everything that comes in and out of your computer. What it's going to do is it's going to let you scan file systems to see whether there's anything naughty in there. That's what it's going to do. As far as a firewall is concerned, I think it's a very good idea for anybody to run a firewall. In my situation, I have a router firewall which protects my local network and for a long time I would just leave the firewall off I figured well I'm protected and then I kind of got to thinking about it and I went well what happens if somebody hacks into this network because that could happen you could have a drive-by attack somebody with some sort of smart device or whatever and they're just looking to bust into Wi-Fi networks okay so let's say they got through my firewall and they got onto my network now once they're on my network because i don't have any firewalls on any of my machines they can just start banging on it and start hitting ports and try and figure a way into the machine so it was a good idea to go ahead and set up a firewall so that's kind of optional like i said if you're if you're really worried about somebody hacking into your local network that would be something that you'd want to do if you have a computer that you are taking and plugging into other networks like you are taking your laptop to the coffee shop to work you definitely want a firewall if you are taking your computer back and forth to the office and you don't really trust the network at the office for whatever reason you definitely want to have a firewall uh, for a home user that's sitting behind a router and you're not terribly worried about somebody hacking into your system it probably is optional and I've run with and without firewalls for years and uh, the only time that I ever did get my network hacked was a long time ago, and I lived um, out in the country, believe it or not, and somebody made their way into my Wi-Fi network, and I just happened to see this rogue machine that wasn't supposed to be there, and then I went and changed all the passwords, and it went away. I think it was a neighbor who was stealing stuff from me, but that was a long time ago. And that was back when we were using web security, which really wasn't that strong anyway. Uh, since then, I've never had an issue with that. 
but a firewall is definitely a nice thing to have around. It gives you just a little bit more confidence. So anyway, there's your video, gang. That's antivirus and firewall for Linux. I hope it does you some good. I know that probably some folks out there are going to disagree with some of the things I said in here. There are widely varying views on security when it comes to Linux. Some people say you don't need any of this stuff, forget it. And some people who are very, very security conscious want you to wear a tinfoil hat and put yourself behind a VPN, a proxy, and four firewalls, and you know that sort of thing. Uh, it all depends on how worried about security you are. But generally speaking, as of the recording of this video, Linux is just about the safest platform that you can run on your desktop. The risk of you getting hacked or having ransomware put on your machine, something horrible like that, is very, very low. But as Linux moves into the desktop space, uh, we may see new threats evolve. So do keep an eye on it. Always keep an eye on security. And just as things change, of course, I will let you guys know what's going on with that when something comes along to talk about. So anyway, thank you for watching the video. Check out ClamAV. Check out GUFW. I will have the links in the description for the video. Also, check out Easy Linux on the web. E check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And if you do, give it a like. And, of course, check out FreedomPenguin.com for lots of groovy stories about Linux. There's all kinds of great articles and help, helping things and how-tos and stuff on Freedom Penguin. Thank you for watching. We'll do it again soon.